All right, what we got here is the All Powers R1500 portable power station. Go ahead and get this out of the box and check it out. All right, we got our power cable here and our uh, warranty card and uh, whatever. We'll look at that here in a minute. And we got our big power station in here. There we go. Turn it on here. See how it comes. Comes at 70% charge. That's pretty good. That makes it nice and safe for shipping. Should be between 60 and 70%. And uh, whenever you get these, the first thing you're going to want to do is charge it all the way. So that's what we're going to do next here. We'll get this all the way charged up. And then we'll go through all these ports here and the specifications of this power station. All right, before we get too far into this video, I just wanted to tell you the basic specifications of this. All powers R1500. Is it's an 1800 watt uh, inverter in here and an 1152 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The R1500, the 1500 designation is that the max charge rate is 1500 watts. All right, let's get this charged up and get on with this video. And what I'm gonna do is plug this into my power strip that goes to my main solar system. And I'll be charging this off of my solar system batteries. We'll get it completely charged up. Let's see what we're gonna be getting here as far as input goes. All right, so we're charging at 377 watts here. So, and then 46 minutes, it should go from 70 to 100%. All right, so it started out a little slow. We're getting to 634, 636 watts now. And we're up to 75%. Now it's down to 34 minutes to finish the job here. All right, it's going up even more here, 865 watts. I'm not sure why it started off so slow, but it's ramping up now. The fans have kicked on. It's relatively quiet. 898, 900 watts. And I know there's a setting inside the app for the... Uh, the different modes of how fast it charges. So we'll take a look at that here in a little bit and uh, see what mode we're in. 990, 1,003 watts. I'm charging this of a 1,000 watt inverter. So that's gonna peg out here. I need to lower that. To turn on the app, you uh, click and hold this button here and it activates the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. And then you should be able to find it in your app. All right, we'll go ahead and take a look at this app here while we're here. This is what the screen looks like when you first open it up. And it does support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. If you use the Wi-Fi, you do need to create an account. So we're just going to go ahead and use the Bluetooth here. So we'll add that there. Next step, you do need to make sure your device is on. And you click that Bluetooth button. Let's go back and see if we can find it again here. So there it is now. Go ahead and click on that. And this app is pretty simple. Uh, you can basically turn on and off the AC and the DC, change the uh, frequency to 50, from 50 to 60 hertz. If you're in uh, North America, just leave it on 60 hertz. Uh, you click the little three little dots up at the top there and uh, you have different modes and then mute mode i'm not sure why they don't just call this like slow so this is the charging speed so when we first turned this on uh it was in standard mode is what had got up over to a thousand uh watts it, it did ramp up slowly up to that thousand watts and uh we're going to have to hook this up to a different uh inverter in order to test this fast mode to see how fast it will charge on fast mode. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that here towards the end of this video as we're doing some of the capacity tests. I have this fully charged now, so uh, we'll get to that here in a little bit. So you can turn on eco mode here, and what that does is, is uh, you, if you turn that on and you can set the shutdown time, so if it, if it doesn't detect that it's making any draw for one of these, whatever you set the hours at here, it will automatically shut down the device to conserve power because just being on does use uh, quite a bit of power, really. 
uh, especially if the AC ports are on. So I always recommend if you're not using your power station's AC output to turn that off. I can have it off here. You turn it on. If that's on, it's using a substantial amount of power, honestly. So the same thing, you can turn those ports off and on, and that's the basics of the app. It's not super sophisticated like some of the other power stations that I have, but you know it does the main things that you need to do and be able to see your percentage in the remaining time. That's really the most important thing to me on these apps. I wish they would have just, because it's so simple, uh, if they would have just made this a mute mode, work mode, uh, a button on the device itself, so you don't need to use the app in order to do that. But the only way that you can set that up and control that is through the uh, app here. All right, we'll go ahead and test some of these ports here. I have this hooked up to a, another power station that can take uh, up to 140 watts of charge, but this only outputs on the two USB-C ports here are 100 watt output. So we're gonna hook it up to uh, with a 240 watt cable so we know that this can handle it. Okay, we need to make sure your DC port is on here. There's a little green light there that comes on that tells you that your DC is on. So we're gonna go ahead and let the uh, All Powers R1500 charge another power station by transferring the power from the USB-C like I said, this has uh, two USB-C 100-watt output ports, but you cannot use these to charge, so they're not bi-directional ports, they're only output. So I'm outputting from this to another power station that can handle the full 100 watts here, and you can see we are getting a full 100 watts of output. Try this port. 101 watts of output. And then you have your two USB-A ports here. These are a maximum of, of 15 watts. And then you have four AC ports. It has these rubber uh, protectors on here to kind of keep water out of here. If you had a little bit of moisture getting in there, a little bit of drizzle or something like that, I wouldn't have this out in the rain. It's not waterproof or anything, but these do help it keep out a little bit. So they have these nice little rubber deals here. If you want to turn on your uh, AC ports, you would need to click that button there. And we'll test out all these ports here in a minute. And then you have your standard uh, cigarette lighter port, which is a 12 volt 10 amp port. And then up on the top here, you have these two wireless ports that uh, have uh, 15 watts output each. So you can have two phones on here if you have a phone that supports the uh, wireless charging. So that's pretty cool. And now on the side here, you have uh, two ports to add external batteries here because they do make a, an external battery. So you can add up to two additional batteries to this to increase the capacity. And then on this side is where you have your your um, your solar input, a circuit breaker, and your standard AC cord, which is just like a basic uh, computer type cord, which is nice if you ever lose it. They're really easy to find and replace. If you're into computers at all, you probably have a million of them laying around. I know I do. All right, so this supports 1,800 watts of output from the AC. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, find something here that can pa uh, use a lot of wattage and uh, see how close we can get it up to that 1800 watts. All right, we're just gonna get some water up to boil here. I have my new wave uh, set on 1300 watts, but for some reason it's only pulling 640 watts. I'm not really sure, I just got this here. So I'm not sure why it's not getting up to the 1300 watts. I may have to return this. Let's just hook something else up to it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add our little tea kettle here. Turn it 
turn that on. 1,333 watts of output. We'll go ahead and plug in this power station thing again here. 1,438. What else have I got to plug in here? All right, we'll get our little Hetrick cooker here that I use all the time on this channel for my smaller power stations. We'll add a little bit of this water. Here. And uh, we'll put this one on, plug this one in. That's a... All right, we'll put that on the low setting, which should be about another 300 watts, which put, should put us right about where we need to be. So we're at 1,762 watts coming out of this. We got this boiling, we got this boiling, and this one's already steaming on its own here. The next setting is gonna be, so there were 1,813 watts. This is boiling like crazy. Let's try turning this all the way to 600 watts, and that should blow this thing here. 2,168 watts we got coming out of here, and there it goes. So let's see if we can just turn this off now and see if it'll reset itself. The DC is still going, but the AC has been triggered. So you do have to hit the AC back on again. And we should see yeah this has stopped now and now we're just doing this which is about 800 watts on its own it's actually only 600 and something watts it's coming down here a little bit anyway we definitely got our 1800 watts out of there Let's go ahead and do that again uh, and just see if we can, how long we can maintain approximately 1800 watts. This combination of these three things put, put us right at 1800 watts. So let's go back to here. There we go. Turn that one off. Then we'll turn this one up all the way. Turn it back down. We'll turn this one on. Trying to get it up close to the 1800 watts again. There we go, 1,787 watts. So you can see the extreme power that we have here with this power station. We're boiling water on our tea kettle, we're boiling water on our induction cooktop, and we're boiling water in our little hitter cooker here, all at the same time on this one all-powered R1500 power station. And we've been here over a minute now, and it's having no problem maintaining right at 1,789 watts, right in there in the range of 1,800 watts. You go over that too much and it's gonna shut down, which is what it should do. That's what we wanna see. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test the different work modes here. So this is on mute mode and we're getting 382 watts of input. We'll switch this over to standard mode. And we should start to see this ramping up here. It should get up to like it was earlier, about a thousand watts or so. And then we're gonna switch it to fast mode and see what the maximum output or maximum charge rate we can get here. So standard mode is right around a thousand watts. We're gonna go into fast mode and see what this can do. And the uh, fan just ramped up a little bit there. Fourteen hundred watts. My goodness. Yeah, if you're gonna use this fast mode, I'd recommend a dedicated circuit. Fifteen hundred watts. Yeah. So fast mode is apparently around fifteen hundred watts. That's pretty awesome. You could charge this thing super fast. All right. When All Power sent me this, they sent me the kit that came with a 200 watt portable solar panel. 
and I went ahead and asked my wife to go outside and demonstrate and unbox the uh, the 200 watt solar panel. So I'll go ahead and roll that footage now. All right, this is the All Powers SP033 200 watt portable solar panel. They have another model that's a little bit different than this that's still a 200 watt panel, but this one is the SP033 model. All right, it has this nice pouch on the side. The panel itself has an MC4 connector. It comes with an adapter cable for MC4 to XT60, plus a, a MC4 to 5521 barrel adapter, and then this little pouch of adapters for going from the 5521 to all sorts of other things so that you could use this panel with just about any other power station as well. It just unfolds here, props up really quickly. It has these Velcro legs. You just uh, pull them back and that they, uh, they're held together with Velcro. They pull back, they got some nice little elastic straps that hold them nice and tight and in position. Get this flap out of the way here. So we can get full sun. All right, so here's my final thoughts on this uh, All Powers R1500 portable power station. For the price, I am super impressed. Um, it's it, very feature rich. Uh, it, it did a great job powering all the way up to the 1800 watts. You can see I had three different things all boiling at the same time, which is pretty impressive for a relatively small uh, portable power station. The app is uh, pretty basic, but it has an app there that gives you the basic functions that you need. I like the dual wireless uh, phone charging on the top um, and the 100 watt output uh, actually puts out the 100 watts. I'm pretty impressed uh, with all powers. I think they're making a name for themselves. I'm impressed with the 200 watt solar panel as well as the R1500. I think it's a pretty good buy if you want a good price and a, a good amount of features for the price. All right, so the current price on their website for this is uh, $549 on sale, and it's $749 for the kit with the 200-watt uh, panel that came with all the adapters and everything that you need. That seems to be a pretty good value. I'll drop links to that down in the description down below. Um, you might want to check out Amazon as well, because sometimes they're cheaper on the website, and sometimes they're cheaper on Amazon. So I always recommend Click both links, check it out, get yourself the best price on this. So my wife did a video on this for Halloween and tell the little creepy ghost story about uh, one of the creepy stalkers that we had ran across in the RV park one time. I'm a little late on launching this video. It's past Halloween now, but you may want to check out the video anyway. I'll drop a link to that right here, and I'll drop a link to some of my other Power Station uh, review videos right here. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.